QuickBooks Online 2023 Bank Reconciliation Month Number 2 Deposits. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30-day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online Sample Company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using Incognito Window or another browser. You can open Incognito if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the in the browser. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Incognito window and then type in into the search engine QuickBooks Online test drive. We're using the sample company to compare the accounting view, the one Get Great Guitars is in, and the business view, the one the sample company is in. You can toggle between the two by going to the cog up top, change the view down below. We're gonna be duplicating some tabs to put reports in, right click in the tab up top, duplicate it, right click the tab up top, duplicate it, back to the tab in the middle as the tab to the right is thinking opening up the reports on the left hand side and looking at one of the favorites that being the balance sheet if you're in the business view the reports are located in the business overview and the reports we're going to go to the tab to the right and open up the favorite other report which is of course the income statement or PL. close up the hand bogey Change the range, 010123 to 022823. Let's look at it on a month by month, side by side, and run it. And tab it to the middle, close up the hand boogie. Scrolling up, change the range, 010123 to 022823. And let's see it on a side by side, month by month, run it to refresh it. There's the setup process we do every time. Last few presentations, we did the bank reconciliation for month number one, first month of operation, emphasizing the fact that we might have specific problems related to the first bank reconciliation. Now we're going to do the second bank reconciliation. That allows us to see what happens to some of those outstanding items we saw in the first bank reconciliation. And it allows us to see what the process will look like in essence after having dealt with those first bank reconciliation issues. So let's actually open up another tab too to look at that prior bank reconciliation. So I'm gonna to go to the tab to the right, right click on it, duplicate, and you can find the prior reconciliations in the reports or in the bank reconciliation area. I'm just gonna to go to the reports here because we've been there before. Reports on the left-hand side, closing up the boogie. You could type in just reconcile up top and it should get there, reconciliation reports. So let's do it that way. And that'll take you to the reconciliation. And so you've got your, your, your mapping up top. So you, now you're in the chart of accounts, bank reconciliation and the history. This is the report we did last time. If I was to view the report, we get our nice summary up top. And this is our statement balance. This is our our register balance to 27403 represents the difference. There's the register, there's our balance here, and the bank balance is on the bank statement for January. Okay, now we're gonna go to February. Notice that when you do this, you want to be using your bank statements, even if you are if you have your bank feeds on and you've got online banking, you're like, I don't need my bank statements. I could just print out my bank stuff anytime I want for any time range I want but you still want to have the bank statements because they have a very delineated, very specific cutoff date that we're gonna use. In this case, the end of January is this number. That must be the same number on the next report. That's what we're looking for here. So if I go to February, then the summary, this is just a, just a mock bank statement, is gonna start with that number. That is now the beginning number. 
With our first bank reconciliation, we had some issues with that beginning number because if we were starting a new accounting system and pulling in the data from a prior accounting system, we might have had outstanding items from the prior accounting system we had to deal with. Once that has been dealt with, then our beginning balance should always match out and we're not going to have an issue with it. We still, then we have our additions and our subtractions. Our ending balance still may not add up to what's on our, our reports over here. If I go back on over to our reports on the balance sheet, we still have a difference here to what's in the cash account. And that's because we still have timing differences that we're going to have to reconcile. So we'll go through the same process. Now, if you have the bank feeds turned on, same kind of thing as with the first one, just a quick reminder here that the bank feeds, if you're constructing your books from the bank, whether using bank feeds or you just take used to, before they had bank feeds, you could have taken the bank statement and just made your accounting system based on the bank statement. But there's some businesses that can't do that. So if you're in a business, for example, where you're getting paid by gig work, then maybe you can do that because you could just wait till YouTube pays you and then record it as income once you get the deposit using the information from the bank to make the transactions. That means your bank reconciliation will be very easy. That means your information in your system will match what's on the bank and that's great. But if you're in a system where you can't do that because you have a cash register, for example, then you might still be able to use the bank feeds, but you're not gonna be using them to record as much as you'll be using them to double check what have you what you have been recording. That's more of a reconciliation process. If you have accrual components, such as when you're invoicing, if you have inventory involved, that complicates the system and you could still use bank feeds, but you just can't construct your entire books from the, the bank and therefore you, you might have timing differences that are still there that we have to deal with. So that's what we're going to deal with for month number two. So this is going to be our our number over here that does not match what's on the bank statement. So let's go through and open up the bank rec for the second month tab to the left. The bank reconciliations are in the accounting tab on the left hand side accounting tab i clicked on it it didn't do anything accounting tab why is it doing that accounting tab there it is and then we've got the reconciliation so reconciliation closing up the hamburger if you're in the other view the sample company it's under the bookkeeping and then the reconciliations all right so now we're reconciling the cash account once again the checking account and now the beginning balance is at the 61,241,85. It should match out what our beginning balance is now. And it should every time going forward because we, we don't have that beginning balance issue if we're reconciling properly each month. We just need to populate the ending balance, which is 101,590.05. So 101,590.05. Hopefully I got it right this time. I, I went dyslexic last time. 101,590.05. People are probably going to be upset from that last one that I messed it up the whole time, but I think it's right. I did it for example purposes though. So it's okay. I messed up on purpose so I can show the issues just like all every mess up. So there it is. So there's the issue. There it is. So then down here, I'm not going to put anything to the service item and the interest item. I think these are going to be, they're not as useful anymore that you have bank feeds because if you had those items, you probably would have included them in the bank feeds. And even if I didn't have bank feeds, I still don't like using them because I would rather enter those in on my own. So I just don't typically use those. And I'm going to say start reconciling. So we have our same uh, summary information up top. We've got the statement ending balance. That's what we just typed in as the ending balance. Hopefully I got it right this time. We've got the cleared balance, which only includes the beginning balance at this point. So we've, this one checks out. I could say that's right. That's one thing that's right. Now I just need to check these off and these off so that our reconciling balance should match, which of course we don't have yet. That's why we have a difference. This cleared balance is represented by the beginning balance. Nothing on the payments has been checked off. We're going to check these off like this, where it will then change that up top and then the deposits will change. Once this gets down to zero, 
we're good to go. Remember that it has to be at zero exactly or else you're messing up, you're cheating and you're losing and you're not, you're cheating, you're only cheating yourself, by the way. I don't wanna, because then you're losing a lot of, uh, of, uh, of uh, assurance. Then if you wanted to hit the info, this is the info if you messed up the beginning balance and you can go up there and do that. So we're gonna go to the deposits down below. I'm gonna sort this by the deposits and we're just going to uh, check them off as we did last time. Remember that if you have the deposits in properly, this should be a painless process. If it's not a painless process, it's probably because you have a, do not have a good system for your deposits. Looking at the flow chart over here, note that when you increase the checking account, you not only wanna get the dollar amount right, but you also wanna get the grouping right. And that's because you wanna make the bank reconciliation as easy as possible. Things that mess that up are things like cash transactions, things like credit card transactions, and PayPal and that kind of stuff can confuse things sometimes depending on your system as well. For example, if you get a cash register, you have multiple sales of $5. If you put it directly into the checking account at $5 each, but then you physically deposit you know, $100 into the account at the end of the day, the two amounts may both be correct in total, but you're not gonna be able to check off the accounts from the bank statement uh, in the reconciliation or through the bank feeds because the bank sees it as $100 where you see it as a bunch of $5 amounts. That's a problem. The credit card company might do the same thing if you have credit card sales. They might not deposit all the money into your account for each credit card sale. They're gonna group it. You need to work with the credit card company to come up with some system so that when you make the deposit on your end, it matches the credit card company. Same when you're using intermediate things like a PayPal or a Stripe, for example. Okay, but we've done that. And so everything should match out. If we look at our, if we look at our bank statement, the information for the deposits, we have a date that should be relevant because deposits should clear between you know one to three days and the amount should be relevant. And if they were electronic transfers, we might have in the memo more information to verify certain items such as, and they could indicate who the customer is, even though it would be in the memo field. All right, we're always gonna go from the statement to our balance because if it's on the bank statement, it needs to be on our side. If it's not on our side and on the bank statement, most likely the bank is correct and we need to fix our side. If it's on our side of things, on the books, but not on the bank statement, then it's possibly it's an outstanding item. That's why we're always gonna go from the bank statement to our books. We're looking for this 34072. Let's do it then. Enough talk, action here. All you do is, all you do is just talk about rant, rant, this, that, blah, blah. Talkers, man. This is gonna be 34072. Okay, so that one's checked off on 125 and this one's on, this one cleared on 2-1. So notice that this one was an outstanding item last time. We wrote it in January, it didn't clear in January. That means if I look at my prior bank reconciliation down here in these reconciling items, this one, I believe was the one we looked at, these are clearing now in February, which is what we would expect. That's what the timing difference is. So I'm gonna go back on over and say, all right, that looks good. Let's check that. Actually, is that, that's, if I go over here, this is the one that the 34, the 34, right. So that one just cleared in February. So that's good. Okay, back on over. Then we've got the next one. Let's make that uh, colored. And then this one's on 12, uh, 250 or the numbers 12, 250. So 12, 250. This one we entered on 2-2. It cleared the bank on 2-5. Uh, so it makes sense within a couple days. So let's go ahead and make that one. And then we've got the 4508. All right. So 4508, 220. So this cleared on 223. Okay. We've got the uh, 750. 
750, boom. We did it on 225, it cleared the bank on 228, okay. And then we've got the 400 and the 400. So there's that. And so there it is. And so we've checked all of these off. Okay, now we still, what is it, what happened here? This needs to be there, okay. So now we've got them all checked off, but we have some on our books that are not on the, that are not on the bank statement. They were written close to the end of the month. So I can double check to see if those are legitimate items because I'm doing the bank reconciliation sometime after the month end. In this case, month end period in February 28th. I wouldn't get the bank statement until like March 15th or something. So I can see if the thing cleared in March. If these did clear in March, then I'm okay with that generally. And I can just say, well, that's fine. That's, these are just timing differences then. And these are gonna be the reconciling items just as with our prior reconciliation, this was a reconciling deposit last time showing the difference from a timing change between what's on the books and what's on the bank statement. So everything's rolling smoothly so far. And before we go to the next half of the bank statement, I'm gonna save this for later and we're gonna get a, some coffee or something. And then we're gonna come back in and finish it. We didn't do any changes. So I'm not gonna pull up the trial balance and we don't need to check our numbers. We'll just be back for further bank recs in a future presentation.